and welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Now, perhaps the request we get the most often on the channel is to cover the occasional classic Sudoku, which we're only too happy to do if we hear of amazing handcrafted classics. Uh, but these do not grow on trees, let me tell you. Fortunately, they do seem to grow in the brain of the constructor Shy. Uh, who, by the way, I'm still hoping will make us a setting video on how she sh how she set the incredible classic Valtari, uh, which we covered on the channel a few weeks ago. Um, anyway, we're now being bombarded with recommendations to look at the puzzle you can see on the screen. It's called Hanabi, which apparently means um, fireworks in Japanese, rather cutely. And um, I do know something about it, which is, I suppose, quite an important thing. And that is that this puzzle apparently uses a brand new Sudoku technique, uh, which is rather daunting for me because it means if I don't find it, um, this video will never see the light of day. Um, but Shai is such a clever setter. She normally leaves a trail of breadcrumbs that is it is possible to find. So wish me luck. I'm very much looking forward to trying this. Uh, before I kick off and read you the rules, which won't take long, um, there's a couple of things to mention. Over on Patreon at the moment, we have my solve of Samantha Mukherjee's puzzle, which Mark actually solved on the channel uh, a few days ago. Uh, I've, I spotted some trickery that, that could, uh, that well, it was useful in that puzzle, and I think it showed the puzzle in a slightly different light, so I, I recommend that to you. Also, of course, we have Clover's setting video. Now, if you watch one video about setting, watch Clovers because it's it's just so erudite. It's been described numerous times in the comments as the TED talk on Sudoku setting with good reason. It really is. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure, a pleasure to spend an hour in her company. Um, the other thing is our podcast, our new podcast is out. I say this slightly bashfully because I still can't believe that people want to listen to people talk about Sudoku as well as watching people. I understand watching solving Sudoku. Talking about it, I was less convinced by, but I'm becoming more convinced. The comments are great. And um, yeah, we've We've released the third edition and the fourth edition is in editing at the moment. So it is a series, uh, whatever that means. It's available on YouTube and it's available on your normal podcast delivery mechanisms, whatever they may be. Now, let's get to Shai's puzzle. What are the rules? Normal Sudoku rules apply. There we go. I've said it. Uh, the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And it's, I tell you, it is so strange for me to see a puzzle replete with so many given digits. This is bizarre. Um, it's, ab look, I can put, di I can actually get a digit. Is this right? Yeah, look, that's just, that. that's just a digit we can put in the grid. <laughs> this is so strange. Um, I can put another digit here. This is a one by the power of ones. Look at that. Those, there are four ones pointing into box seven. Whenever you get four of a digit pointing into a box, you can normally, well, you can always fill in that digit because it will only be able to go in one cell. Uh, twos are in one of those two squares. Threes, th three in box seven is also exactly placeable, which means that three in box four is in one of two places. Two in box seven is placeable here. Four is placeable here. Again, there's four, look at that. There's four fours looking into box seven. Um, now, what next? Twos maybe, yes. Near, well, nearly. Twos in box eight are very nearly restricted. How many twos have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, so these are the only twos left in the grid to be placed. Maybe I should do that more often. So we've got seven ones. So which boxes have I not got ones in? These two. There are ones in this sort of X-wing pattern here. I thought, <laughs> the thing is, knowing that this involves a new Sudoku technique, I mean, this isn't a real X-wing anyway, because it's just the only places ones can go in the remainder of the puzzle. So it's not interesting to know that ones are eliminated from these squares. But it is slightly strange to just say, well, X-Wing, don't worry about that. Boring, boring old hat. Um, right, come on. What else can we do here? So we double click ones, we double click twos, didn't we? Double click threes, let's see what that was. Ah, threes, look, I can place a three here. Which 
which means threes in one of those two squares. How many threes have we got now? We've got seven again. Um, oh, I see, and it's this little X-wing of threes that we've got left to do. Fours. Ah, there's a four here immediately. Fours are in one of those two squares. And one of these two squares. And let me guess, I bet we've got... Yes, we've got seven fours. Okay. And you can see that the fours, the fours are sort of rotationally similar to the ones in terms of their remaining position. Fives then. Ah, fives look are less, well, they're less abundant in the grid. Let's describe it like that. These are, these are, fives are like the big five when you go to Africa. You only see a few of them. Um, Sixes are similar actually. Look, there's not many sixes in this grid. Sixes in one of those three. I'm not going to resort to pen. Ah, six. What about six in box one though? Six is locked into one of two places. Sevens. Sevens are also, they're in two places there and two places here. Eights. There are no nines in the grid. So nines are like leopards whenever I go to Africa. They just don't seem to exist. Uh, but eights, can we do anything with eights? We can't. I'm not sure I can go far beyond what I've already pencil marked. That might be wrong, but I'm not seeing anything immediately obvious. So, so we get here, do we? Is this where I've got to see some magic? There's a one, two, three, four, quadruple here which is a bit interesting I'm wondering about those squares uh, ah hang on hang on before we get on to any any trickery there are there are some cells i can see which are limited like this square here from the column you can see it's got to be six eight or nine from the row it can't be eight so that's a six or a nine and I'm also looking actually at column five and row five, where I have five givens that look quite interesting. So one, two, six, nine. Yes, that square is only six or nine. One, six or nine here. One, two or nine here. Ah, two, six or nine here. Okay, sorry, that looks like it might be a red herring. Um, Let's check the row. We need three, four, five, no, three, five, seven, nine. That's, <laughs> that is particularly disappointing. This cell has let itself down, hasn't it? It's basically, it'll allow anyone in. Um, this square is three, seven, or nine, I think. Eliminate five. That square is five, seven, or nine. And this square is uh, that gets rid of two of them that's just five or nine so we are getting a few little cells dotted around which are sort of by value cells cells that can only be one of two digits um maybe check this row although i don't really like the look of it we've got sevens eights and nines to place so this square is eight or nine and this square is seven or nine. And why not? We'll just we'll complete the pattern, seven, eight or nine there. This column, five, sevens, eights and nines. Ooh. It's getting awfully chock-a-block now. And this is where I will, I will not flourish. Where it's, I'm sure you've all seen this before, but when, I, when there's almost too much in, information in the grid, I really do struggle a with scanning and b to sort of see the wood for the trees um this square is a little bit restricted i can see that c in fact that sees the first six digits look one two three four five six so this is only that's only seven or nine actually that's interesting This square, I think, is that is surprised me, and yes, there's something here. 
there's something with sevens here for this square. I'm not sure what it is, but there is something with sevens because I'm looking, if I make this a seven, where do I put seven in here and in here? And the answer is in exactly the, well, what, what will amount to being only here because this is rather interesting. Let's highlight this square. If this is if this is a seven, you can't put seven in either of those two squares. And look, we've got a seven here and a seven here, ruling out sevens from those two squares. So in column one, the seven would have to be in one of those three squares. And in column row nine, the seven would have to be in one of those three squares. And the only square that meets those criteria is there. So this square is there's something going on with this square. I mean, obviously, I don't know that this is a 7, so I can't write 7 in here. But that is the first thing I've seen where I'm sort of suspicious. So if this is 9, we don't get anything like as powerful a deduction. 9 is ruled out of these squares. Well, if that square was a 9 as well... then we would have to put 9 here. Hang on. So if this is 9, the problem then is that 9 can escape, if you like. In column, column 1 and row 9, there is an escape valve for the 9 out of here. There is This feels like a sort of empty rectangle type trap in the sense that in box 7, the digits that are unplaced, which are 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, are either vertical or they're horizontal, or they're sort of both. But they, they, they sort of exist in a binary state. Ah, no, hang on, hang on. Eights, ah, there's something going on with eights now. I spotted it quickly with sevens here. I didn't spot that this has a similar idea. Look at this one regarding eights. Good grief. Right. So it's the same question again. What if this square is an eight? The answer. Well, when I say what if this square is an eight, I have to be a little bit clearer. Where does eight go in column one and row nine? And I think that the answer is that square again. Because if this is 8, these two 8s rule the 8s out of these two positions in those columns and rows. So 8 is forced to be in one of those three in column 1 and forced to be in one of these three in row 9. And the only square that meets that criteria is this square. Now, now we are getting somewhere because now I'm realising that these two squares cannot be a 7-8 pair because if they're a 7-8 pair, this square becomes a Schrodinger cell and has to be simultaneously a 7 and an 8, which it can't be. It can't sort of oscillate between the two. That won't work. So that means if this can't be a 7-8 pair, one of the squares must be a 9 at least, or maybe both of them, I suppose. Um... If they were both nines, yes, then that's a nine as well through this. There, yeah, so there's some mad trickery going on along the, uh, in these three squares. Let's highlight that one as well. Um, now, if there is a nine in one of those squares, and I'm contending that there is, there is not a nine in those two squares, which I don't think I knew before. Because, of course, a 9 in either of these, well, if this was a 9, it sees both of those. If this is a 9, it sees both of those. And we know one of them is a 9, at least one of them is a 9. So there is no 9 in those squares. So let's check this square. This square is not 1, 2, 3. Uh, it can be 4. It can't be 5. It might be able to be 6. It can't be 7, 8, and it can't be 9. So that square has suddenly become interesting. That definitely gets a colour. This is red. Um, now, the other one was this one. Ah, that doesn't look as good. Immediately I can see this can be one, two, three, four. 
maybe five, six, seven, eight, and it can't be nine. That's what we've just proved. So this one can be read as well. That's actually quite interesting. Although the disappointing thing here is that I don't feel like I know very much about, I suppose, I was just thinking in terms of what, what the interesting digits have been down this diagonal, and they've been sevens, eights, and nines. Do I know? That could be a nine as well, couldn't it? Or possibly a five and a six. Oh, this was, yeah, this was just my example of what happens if this if this was a 7-8 pair, this has to be simultaneously a 7 and an 8. So, this feels like it's sort of, it's very interesting, but I don't really know, I don't really know what it means, if I'm honest. Um, Let me just think about this again. So if th this can't be 7 and 8, because that requires simultaneousness in this one. If it's double 9, this is a 9. Because we have to put a 9 in one of those three and a 1 of those three. So 9 is definitely an option for this square. We know if either of these are a 7. Oh, I see. Yes, okay, so this square can only be 7, 8, or 9. That's the point. Because, let's just double check this. Either this is double 9, in which case we can do our trick on these squares and say 9s are forced into those and those and therefore here. Or, one of these is not 9, the moment one of them is not 9, whichever one it is has to go there by the power of logic. What was that telling us, though? Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry if you're all shouting at me. Um, what's that telling me? Is this square very restricted? Or this one? Let's double check these. What are the exact options for these squares? So this can be five, I think, eight or nine. Yeah, maybe I've got to perform due diligence actually and do some bookkeeping here. What, what's this square? So this is six, seven or nine. Hmm. Okay, well, let's check that one. Uh, this one is three, five, seven, or nine. It's not three, so that's five, seven, or nine. And this one is four, six, eight, uh, six, eight, or nine, I think. Six, eight, or nine. Oh, so those squares don't quite look as devastatingly interesting as um, as these ones did. So is there something... I'm wondering now if I'm, what I'm meant to be observing is that fives and sixes have to go, they can't go in the corner. Why would that matter? So if the six was horizontal, it would have to go here. Then it would have to go there. That would be interesting for this square. If the six is here. Oh, good grief, you are joking. Hang on, I think there's something going on with sixes. I think wherever you put the six in box seven, you end up with a six in one of Oh, this is, this is it. This is it. Oh, this is just gorgeous. I think I see what Shy has done here. By, by eliminating six from this square, 
you actually reach perfect binary logic in box 7 because now we can simply state that the 6 is either vertical or it's horizontal. It is not both. And when we state that, we get the strangest thing happening because if the 6 is vertical, then where do we put the 6 in the horizontal row? And the only place it can go if there's a 6 in one of those is there. So this is one possible position for 6. Let's highlight that yellow. Now, if on the other hand, the 6 is in this domino, then the 6 in column 1 must be here. And therefore, we know there is a 6 in one of these two squares. Therefore, we know there is no 6 in that square. And that is a 4. That is just, that is ridiculous. And that 4 is giving us other things. Look, it gives us a 4, a 1. Oh, hang on, I'm not sure I trust that pencil mark. So I've got 1s written into those squares. Hang on, hang on. Why is this pencil mark 1? Let's just come back a bit and double check. I don't want to make a mistake here. So 4 is coming out of here. 4 looks, uh, yeah, yeah, we had, yeah, that was right. I don't know why I've left 1s in those two squares. Oh, no, that's, that's, I tell you what's wrong. It's these 1s. This 1 here is nonsense. The 1s should be there. And in fact, the 1s were never in a funny arrangement. They were never symmetrical with the 4s. The 4s were there. The 1s were here. So that was all complete hogwash. But anyway, at least I've unwound the hogwash. This is not 4. This is 4. Unfortunately, that doesn't give us the 1s. Um, is that all we get is the res resolution of the 4s X-Wing? That cannot be all we get. You mean puzzle. Oh, you rotten thing. Um, that square is 6, 8 or 9. Oh, I can't do the same thing for that square, can I, with 5s? Oh, please let that be right. Um, if fives are there, I don't believe it. I don't believe what she's done. She hasn't just done it with six. She's done it with fives as well. Of course she's done it with fives as well. As well. She's shy. This is just amazing. If fives are here, a vertical in, in box seven, then where does the five go in row nine? It's there. So it deserves to be yellow, or at least its own colour orange will make it. Oranges and lemons and the bells of St. Clements and all that. So if 5 is vertical, 5 is here. If 5 is horizontal, then 5 obviously can't be in these squares and can only go there. So the oranges are pinpointing the possible locations for 5 in column 1 and row 9. And one of them must be true and they're looking at there which now must be a one which means that's not a one that does resolve the ones in this box look so so the upshot of this magic is the resolution of the ones and the fours Ah, and now Sudoku is our friend. Look, sixes have suddenly got locked. Look, this is gorgeous. Sixes have got locked into box five now here. Ah, and I see. Yes, okay. So before I did any of this trickery, six could have gone in all three of those positions. Once you get the one and the four, you lock out two of them and you get the six, which means we get the three, which means we get a three here. Now, that's ruling out a 6 from this square. Now I've got a 7-9 pair left here. Okay. Um, which means what exactly? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but it is fascinating. Um, 
So maybe we've got to look now at row four of the grid, where we've got to place fives, eights, and nines. So this square sees eight, so that's five or nine, I think. Can we do any better than that? The answer appears to be no, which is very disturbing. Um, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Surely there's no more magic here. Is there more magic? Is there? Is there balm in Gilead? Um, can we do more then? I'm not sure it's going to be obvious to me how we do more, because. Oh, no, I say that. I can see something. Right. These can't be seven. I think we said this ages ago in the puzzle. So where does seven go? Yeah, OK. I'm not sure that square can be seven. And that would be useful because that would place the seven. Right, let's check this. So sevens in box seven there seem to be some options option one is that this is the seven we are putting the seven in the corner now we know if we're putting seven in the corner this square is a seven because we know that this square will be a nine this will be a seven very simple now if seven isn't in the corner it's got two possibilities it's either in this domino or it's in this domino now if it's in this domino again seven goes here that's very straightforward because this has to be 9. But if 7 goes here, the question then is, where does the 7 go in row 6? And the answer is, I don't think I know, except it's, it's got to be in one of those two squares. So it's never here. It's either here or it's here in box uh, 5. So it's not there. And that means I get a 5-9 pair, which means that square becomes a 7. Uh, maybe that doesn't do it. Ah, uh, no, maybe it does. Hang on, I'm maligning things unfairly because that has given me a nine here and a seven here if I trust my pencil marks and of course I do um, ah now this nine is giving me an eight here sorry brief pause there uh, someone fell over in the shower as you would have heard had I not uh, edited out um, that enormous bang um, anyway where were we we've we got the eight here uh, and we were probably about to make more progress on finishing the puzzle, hopefully. Um, we have got, uh, I say hopefully, um, what's the, what have we got over here now? We've got, oh, uh, we can get rid of nine from the corner. So these squares are five, six, and eight. And we can, What can we do? Have we finished this now? This square can't be eight. So this column, we need five and six to finish it off. Um, and we can... Ah, yes, okay. Now let's ask the sensible question, where does six go in row nine of the grid? Because it's not here because of that six. It doesn't seem to be able to be in those two squares either ever since we got the six there. So this looks like it's got to be a six. This is a five. This five is doing, is it doing magic or not? It might be. Um, no, is the disappointing answer. It's really not doing magic. So we've got to look for something else. Let's have a look down this column. Ah, no, this six is now doing magic because that six is seeing that square. So that's good. So that gets us an eight and a six and a six and a nine and nine and an eight. You'll have to forgive me if I'm uh, sort of, I'm stumbling a bit towards the finish here because it's been about 15 minutes since I looked at the puzzle. Um, five and nine have to go in that little square. Ah, that's interesting. Look at row nine. We've got a five nine pair suddenly and this square the yellow one was a seven which gives us a nine here 
once we got the 8 there, we know from the earlier logic, we've got to put 8 in the corner. Nobody puts 8 in the corner apart from me today. That's a 5. Um, this is a 2. That must be a 5. That's a 9. I think we're there, aren't we? Yeah, it's all starting to fall into place. Um, this is an 8. We must put an 8 here, I think, by the power of Sudoku. That's a 6. Uh, those two squares are fives and sevens, which we can do. It's all going in. That's a seven. That must be a nine. This row needs a six. This square needs a seven. Uh, this has got to be a two nine pair, and we can do it like that. And I think that is the puzzle solved. Now, let us just stop for a moment and admire the genius we have just run smack bang into with this puzzle. I have no clue what's, what, even what this, this idea should be called, but it's quite startling. So it seems to, res it revolves heavily around these squares and the very cunning placement, I think, of these sevens and these eights. And the fact that you can lock, therefore, th whatever goes into these squares, if it's, if it's, a seven or an eight it had to fall into these this position and obviously if it's double nine nine goes here and then I mean and this was absolutely startling the way that the fives and the sixes hello Maverick um, the ways that the way that the fives and sixes resolved in order to push digits to be looking at these two squares was I mean it was sublime and amazing I mean it's just ridiculous setting I have no idea shy how you make classics that do this. It is, you know, the Richard Stolk quote about classics is so correct from my perspective. How do you make a good classic Sudoku? You make 20 and pray. Well, you, you've got, you've got, please make us a setting video where you reveal your secrets about this because it is wizardry. It really is. Absolutely loved it. And I'm startled by it again. Take a bow shy. Thanks so much for watching. I'm back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.